This week I'm giving you a look at how I cover a cabinet in Tolex. Stick around. First I cut the sides. I do a rough estimate, making them a little bit oversized. Then I'll cut for the back panel, and again make it a little oversized. Finally, I will take measurements on the width of the opening in the cabinet so that I can then cut the top and bottom pieces. You'll notice I'm using a cutting mat that has a grid on it. That's so I can get my lines parallel. I don't wanna do any cutting on these top and bottom pieces after they're already installed. So I gotta make sure that they're right. They can be a little bit long, but they have to be the exact width. Here are my tools for covering a cabinet with toe legs. I like to make sure I have some gloves, a cheap throwaway brush, some Tolex glue, a box cutter with a fresh blade, and I use two steel rulers, one long and one short. Put down craft paper, because I don't want Tolex glue all over my shop. And I'll butter everything up with Tolex glue. I usually start with the Tolex, because the Tolex takes a little bit longer to dry. And then I'll do the cabinet. Now when I do the cabinet, I'm only doing the ends and the overlap of the ends. Once everything has been covered in glue, then I bust out the heat gun. Now the heat gun will speed up the drying process. Colex is a type of contact adhesive where both sides have to be dry to adhere to each other. You'll notice when it's dry, it will go from white to being clear. And then I make sure in corners and things on the cabinet where glue can pull up. If the glue is still pulled up and wet, it's not gonna adhere right. So you wanna make sure you take the time to let it dry.
pretty self-explanatory on the back panel. I'm really not going to get into all the details about it, but you got to make your corners come together cleanly, and then you do your wrap, and then you cut a 45 that you meet with the other side. Um, I like to repeat steps, so I'll do the ends, fold the ends in, and then I'll do the sides. All right, now I'll put the ends on. I'll do one end, flat on the end, and then I'll do the other end. That way I don't have a sticky, gluey end that I'm sticking down on the table while I work on the other end. I've got two ends covered with Tolex, even if it's just the flat part. You don't have to follow the way that I do it exactly, but whatever way that you choose to do it, find a way that works and then repeat it, instead of trying to reinvent how you do it every time. In my case, I like to cut, I like to fold over, cut from the inside opening, and I like to do that all the way around. Then I'll come back and I'll cut my corner while pulling tension on it.
I'll cut the piece for the front angle. You gotta find where that horizontal line is and cut it and then fold in. Once everything's folded over, I'll smooth everything down with my hand. If I need to, I'll use my mini ruler to press into a groove or smooth. I also like to keep a small rolling pin on hand to apply pressure evenly rolling across something. You want to cut at a 45 degree angle from the inside opening out. Then you fold over while pulling and applying pressure. The thing I like to do here is to use the flat, dull side of the box cutter to press into that corner to make that 45 match the 45 that's already been cut. Then, if there's any doubt in my mind and I can't really fully see the outline of where the cut needs to be, I will make the cut oversized but I won't cut as deeply so I don't cut into the layer below. And then you can come back afterwards. Once you make this cut, there's really no going back. So it would be better to leave a little extra on there and not press as hard and go through to the second layer and then come back see where they meet, come back, and cut again than it would be to make a blind cut where you're leaving a gap behind. So you can't leave a gap behind on a corner. I will say on a head like this, the bottom corners will be covered. Uh, so if you're going to make a mistake, it would probably be better to start on a corner that may have a cover on it. But generally speaking, every opportunity you get to cut one of these corners is an opportunity to master how to do it so you don't really have to worry so much when you do it in the future in more physical spots. Just work slowly, take your time, make clean cuts. You got a nice clean box cutter, you got a nice clean razor blade, you're making clean cuts. Once that's done, I'll repeat it on all sides. important part of contact cement is you want to apply pressure on the pieces. You can't just stick them together and think that they're glued. You actually have to press them into each other. The heat gun is nice to have on hand because you can use the heat gun to heat something back up and pull it back apart and maybe give it another try if you need to. The Tolex glue can be reactivated with the heat gun so you're not in a hurry but you also need to make sure that you don't try and glue pieces that aren't fully dry yet, because they won't stick.
My first experience doing Tolex was about 15 years ago. I bought a Rhodes piano off of Craigslist and it was totally broached out. I actually got two of them at the time. It was total need of restoration, completely funky and moldy, and so I redid the Tolex for the Rhodes piano and for the lid that went with it. And actually, I take that back, I had two Rhodes pianos that I completely recovered. And a Rhodes piano, especially with the lid and it's got a pocket for the legs and all that's involved there, if you could survive retolexing a Rhodes piano, it basically is a primer to do every kind of seam that you could possibly think of doing uh, with Tolex. So that's actually how I got started. Uh, after I survived the Rhodes piano recoverings, I realized, you know, once you get the hang of it, once you get through the workflow, it's really not that difficult. My long steel rule is an inch and a half wide, which I find gives me the perfect overlay over the top. So the wrap goes over the top and over the bottom. I will take my long steel rule and from above look and line it up from above and then I'll cut off what anything that's inside of an inch and a half.
because I don't want to have a lot of glue to clean up afterwards on the Tolex that shows, I will mask it off. So quickly, you just take some masking tape and go from the front to the back. Once those are masked up, now you can flip the whole thing on its side and cover the top and bottom and do inside where it wraps with Tolex glue. Now it's time to do the top and bottom pieces. As we made sure before, we're cut already to the width of the opening. Once it's all dry, then it's all about alignment. So you wanna make sure your two parallel sides are parallel with the outer edges. Go ahead and place it in, wrap it around, smooth it under. Let's take a look at this thing. Say it turned out pretty good, eh? Thanks for watching. Hope you'll like this video. Subscribe to the channel. If there's something that you wanted to see related to amp building, put it in the comments below and I'll try and I'll try and show you what I do, how I do it. Thanks a lot.